What's up, everybody? Welcome to your midweek follow-up. So this last week was Palm Sunday, and I shared a story with you about Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. It'd be the last time he kind of shows up there um, as we begin this Holy Week experience moving towards the cross and then ultimately the empty tomb. A really exciting time. Um, and we're going to cover that story this week, and we're going to have a Holy Thursday um, experience online that you can check out. We're also going to do a Good Friday um, experience online, so I hope you will tune in for all those as well as Easter on next Sunday. But we talked about three things. Um, first one, we talked about how um, the people along the way kind of spread their garments on the ground. They made this messianic demonstration, this, 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 you know, kind of expression of them saying, this is the king. This is the one true king. This is the ruler. Maybe not the king that you wanted. Maybe not the king that, that you looked for in terms of coming in, destroying people, taking from people, making sure that they were recognized as the one true king, but actually the one that is there to help people. The one that instead of build up their monetary value would actually distribute it to those in need. Um, so it was a different king, but it was a messianic demonstration. And so one of the questions I'm asking you this week is, is talk about how that um, can be your life. Like how can your life, what in your life is going to be a messianic demonstration saying, this is Jesus, the king, my king, the one that I follow. The second thing I talked about um, was that along the way in this story, um, the disciples and the people following Jesus all of a sudden just broke into song. They started chanting and singing, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. And it's one of those things, like if you grew up in church, um, kids would kind of wave the palm branches and they would uh, come down the aisle saying this and shouting it. And this was kind of like the scene. This was the ruckus. This was this amazing thing, this flamboyant display of um, just praise and honor to Jesus. It was incredible. And so how in your life are you doing that? How in your life are you reflecting that love, that admiration, that, that deep longing to be the one who follows the Messiah, you know? The third point that I talked about was that um, the Pharisees, you know, towards the end, were getting super anxious about this. Um, they were afraid that, man, if, if, if Rome starts paying attention to what's going on here, they're going to realize that, man, we're um, saying someone else is king. And that Rome isn't the ultimate one in charge and that Caesar isn't our Lord, but in fact, Jesus is the Messiah. And they didn't want the Roman officials to come in and um, kind of start war, start fight, start killing people, um, start um, punishing people, or start taking away their authority even um, in the community. And so that was a really weird time. And, and Jesus looks at them and says, you know, they really wanted the, the followers of Jesus to be quiet. They wanted them to just shut up, just hold it down, you know, like do your thing, but just hold it down. And Jesus was like, guys, you don't even understand. Like if they were quiet, the rocks would cry out. Like all of creation can't stop, but praise me. All of creation sings praises daily to their creator. All of creation is there praising God. It's where we see the fingerprints of God all over. We might miss it on our own selves. We might miss it in our own hearts and minds. But when you see a beautiful sunset, when you sit on a beach and see how the water goes on forever and you see a mountaintop and look down to the valley, you can't help but go, this is gorgeous. And my creator is good. So this week, I hope you'll take some time, journal through the questions, uh, take some time, maybe discuss these with friends, maybe um, talk about how um, this is something that you can um, kind of internalize and, and kind of walk through this week. Because this week is, um, like we said, this whole time Lent is this introspective time. It's time where we kind of work on our insides so that our insides can match what we're going to be saying and doing on our outside, right? So this week, 
as we move towards the cross and ultimately to the empty tomb. I pray that uh, you will allow God to work within you, that you will allow God to do something amazing, maybe something that you haven't had time to deal with, maybe something you haven't had the energy, um, or it hasn't been a priority. And so now you have a chance to reset priorities, recalibrate your life. And I hope you'll take that. I hope you'll take that this week and allow this story, um, this kind of seemingly ending to this Jesus story plays out for the rest of the week. Hope you guys have a great week and I look forward to uh, you guys seeing what, what we do for Thursday and Friday. And uh, I'm excited about worshiping with you on Sunday. So we'll see you next time. If I can help in any way, give me a shout.